Hi, this is Andrew with Prime Medical Training, and today we're going to talk about waveform capnography and how it pertains to patients in cardiac arrest. On a regular basis, we already record and monitor oxygen saturation. That's kind of a given. But what we're not seeing is we're not seeing the person's CO2 levels, the other side of the coin. And it's an important thing to monitor, especially in cardiac arrest, so that we can balance and manage our patients a little bit better. So waveform capnography measures CO2, and there's a particular number we're looking for. In cardiac arrest, we want to see a CO2 level greater than 10 millimeters of mercury. If it's less than 10, there's a few things going on. Number one, we either are having terrible ventilations, and we're ventilating too fast. So if we're ventilating too fast, they're not being able to breathe off the CO2, we need to slow it down a little bit. So there's an easy fix. The other thing that it measures is the quality of our compressions. So if we are not pushing hard and fast, you're going to see your CO2 levels drop. And we can easily fix that by having some better quality compressions going on, rotating people out, and making sure that we have a fresh set of arms and hands doing our compressions and or using the Lucas or Autopulse. The third thing that waveform capnography is good for is innovation. So, in the past, we've had to listen over lungs and, and look for tube fog and uh, x-ray and all these things to figure out whether or not we were able to successfully innovate somebody. And we still do that. We're not discrediting it. But the most definitive and accurate way of determining whether or not we got an innovation into the trachea is through waveform capnography. So waveform capnography is going to show you some things on the monitor. It's going to do this boxy type, mo type uh, reading. And when it goes up, that's the person exhaling CO2. When it comes down, that's when the person is either breathing or being ventilated. And it's measured on a scale. So you'll have 10, 20, 30, 40. And you're able to see where that CO2 is lining up. If you get an innovation into the esophagus, you're not going to see any kind of waveform. It's only when you get it into the trachea that a waveform is going to show up. Now, what it doesn't tell you is whether or not you got a right stem innovation or some other um, issue like that. But if you see waveform, you at least know that you've gotten into the trachea. So those are the three things that waveform is good for in a cardiac arrest. Next we need to talk about ROSC, Return of Spontaneous Circulation. So when we see ROSC, there are two ways to determine whether or not we got a person into a, a um, spontaneous circulation and that's number one via pulse check and that's the tried and true method however what's difficult is if you get a person and you see an organized rhythm and you're feeling for a pulse oftentimes that pulse is very weak and thready and so it's difficult to determine if the person is in PEA or if they just have a really weak pulse that we're not being able to pick up on so that's where waveform comes in when you have catenography You can actually see when the person goes into ROS immediately as it happens because you're going to see a number spike to about 50 millimeters of mercury. It'll be a significant spike from what they originally were in. And this can happen even in the middle of your compressions, unlike a pulse check where you have to wait to the end of your two minute cycle to check. You can see this happen at any point during the code. And if you see a spike, you know that you have return of spontaneous circulation, whether or not you can feel a pulse. 
So it's a great way in determining, um, in determining ROSC. And what you're going to see in a post-ROSC situation, over here we have post-ROSC. You'll see that number drop down to about 35 to 40 millimeters of mercury, usually 10, 15 minutes after you initially see this spike. It will drop down to the range where you and I normally sit. So those are the numbers for waveform capnography. That's what you're looking for, and that's how it's super helpful. Um, for those of you who haven't seen it, this here is the device used for waveform capnography. It's going to plug in to your ET tube, and then your BVM goes in on the top. And it's a little cord that will either plug into your monitor or into the waveform capnography unit. And it just reads your CO2 levels. Um, make sure that if you've got a patient who is vomiting or has any kind of secretions coming up through the tube, that it doesn't get in here because it will affect your reading. All right, thanks for taking a minute to learn a little bit more about waveform capnography. If you have comments or questions, please write them below. Subscribe to our channel. We post videos on a weekly basis. And visit us at primemedicaltraining.com to view a list of our upcoming uh, classes. We'd love to see you and talk with you. Have a great week.